and I favor very much just looking at performance, which in the end is, in my view in particular, the most important thing in the end. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Funny enough, I should say that because my guest Mato Hanselman here thinks that periodization is overrated. You son of a bitch. Total You BS. come on my channel taking money out of my f***ing pockets? If funny enough, you and I probably agree on this, but why don't you give me your best idea about why periodization in hypertrophy training is overrated? And maybe I'll try to clap back at you. I would say that if you look at all studies on periodization, which is a whole lot of studies and a couple of meta-analyses at this point, the vast majority of those find no differences for hypertrophy. For block periodization, the research is actually negative on average. Daily undulating periodization has a decent track record, has been shown in meta-analytic research as well to improve strength development, not muscle growth, but strength development. So all in all, research finds that it's very important to manage fatigue, to train hard, to implement progressive overload. But when you have those things in order, especially if you then also auto-regulate, the periodization model that you use or whether you periodize at all, doesn't really matter. Now, I would say that periodization in general, if you're doing these things, you are kind of periodizing, you know? Periodization just means the structure of your program over time. And if that's not static, then technically you are implementing periodization. But I think that there are a lot of people that massively overcomplicate periodization and just try to sound smart. If you look at these old the Soviet textbooks and super training and all of these, uh, the classics, they will have tons of theory, zero empirical evidence to support any of it, to make your programs look extremely complicated. And there are a lot of PTs that have their programs all set up and they will program the next eight weeks in advance. They will tell you exactly how many reps and how many sets and what weight you're gonna use eight weeks in advance. And then they have this magic periodization model with daily undulating linear periodization with block periodization mixed in and a deload phase and a supercomposition overreaching in there and every term that they can imagine, and probably some stuff that's never even made it into a scientific study to begin with. And they just massively overcomplicate things, and just, it doesn't work at all. In fact, I would say that's probably inferior, because autoregulation has been shown actually to work better than trying to plan everything eight weeks in advance, because the best trainer in the world is not gonna be able to plan your weights and sets eight weeks in advance, because they don't know how well your sleep will be, how long your exam week is going to be, and how much stress that is going to give you whether your diet is going to be perfectly on track and how you're going to respond to exactly this program. So auto-regulation and these basic principles that I mentioned, I think are 10 times more important than periodization. And especially for muscle hypertrophy purposes, I typically implement only the basic principles and daily undulating periodization. You can implement different types of periodization, but I don't think they're gonna do anything that you can't get done via other methods. You think about that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to put it all together. It's fucking fucking me up. Listen, it's super simple, Meno. We make money here at RP by lying to people that periodization is important. We tell them it's something they need and only we can give it to them because we have PhDs. How the fuck am I supposed to pay my butlers if you come on my channel talking this much shit? Shit, my bad, These people man. have families, I think. I don't ever talk to them. They take care of my Lamborghinis. That's even more important than having a family. I like your Lambos. Yeah. You, all, all of you saw the fleet. Yeah. I saw it's the nice fleet. fleet. The whole nice underground fleet. garage situation. I don't love to talk about it, but I love to yeah. talk Andrew about Tate it. Andrew Tate who? Never heard of him. Is he a guy that is appreciating my Lambos also down there? There's people that come in. There's tours. We give tours every now and again to the public. In any case, um, I think almost all of this disagreement situation is terminological in nature. And by that, I mean what many people in the research profession have termed periodization is an incorrect use of the term. I'll start with a nice contentious point. There is no such thing as daily undulating periodization. If you look at all periodization theory and literature beforehand, anyone who would have made that up who had read the research would have called it daily undulating programming because that's really what that is. You call it periodization. There's also no such thing as linear periodization because linear is a type of progression and it is by definition not periodized. It just goes up. It's also a way that no one trains. Exercise scientists, specifically in the Western world, were really out of touch with sports science, specifically in the Eastern world, and they basically got into the research asking the wrong questions in the wrong kinds of ways made up the wrong kinds of terms with no background in the situation, and just kind of made a whole fucking gigantic mess of things. 
It turns out that periodization actually does have a definition. It is simply the following definition. The manipulation of training variables that results in the maximization of three qualities. One, the rate of gains. Two, the minimization of injury. And three, the ability to peak for maximum performance at a time of your choosing. Every single training variable under that scheme is a part of periodization. So the idea to ask of does periodization work for hypertrophy is a nonsense question because everything you do for hypertrophy is necessarily to, I think, try to optimize the rate of gains, try to reduce the probability of injury, and in the context of actual bodybuilding competition, peak at a certain time of your choosing. So thus the real question we have to ask is, what does hypertrophy periodization look like? Because it must exist by the definition of periodization, has to exist, and how detailed is it? And how far in advance can we do it? Can you do a lifetime periodization for an athlete? What the fuck? Then they break their leg. What you got now? Your whole fucking 16 year plan is down the drain. It has to change. And it turns out that's also true for most annual plans and even most macro cycle plans. So something we do here at RP is we have a very good idea of what we're doing in this workout. But even our next workout, like if you use the RP hypertrophy app, sometimes your next workout, if you try to preview it this week for next week, it says this workout isn't planned yet because we don't know what the fuck you did yet. The app works on data from last week to make you this week. So you're going to have some idea of what you do next week, but it's a little hazier. You're going to have some idea of where you're going in the next month, but that's very hazy and very contingent upon what you did before. So first of all, there's the time scale issue. Good periodization has a respect for the fact that you cannot predict the future with a high degree of fidelity if the future timeline is really far out. So you have to understand that you make good moves, you auto-regulate, and you have a general idea of where you're going, but that has to be modifiable at all times. That's a big deal. The second thing to say about periodization is to ask, to what degree are we manipulating variables and in what ultra structure? A lot of people have tested what they call block periodization and hypertrophy. Block periodization is really simple. You do something different in one mesocycle, you do something different in another mesocycle, and then maybe in another mesocycle still you do something a little bit different. But they didn't do that in most of the studies. They took the kind of block periodization that was optimized for strength power sport and tested it for hypertrophy. They tested a hypertrophy specific block, then a strength block, then a power block, and they're like, this is inferior at best for hypertrophy. Well, no fucking shit. It's supposed to be three hypertrophy blocks in a row. Isn't that what we're training for? It's surprising that a power training model does not fit a hypertrophy model. People think periodization is like what they read in Tudor Bampa's book, Periodization. Tudor Bampa gave three fucks about bodybuilding. That book's not designed for that shit. It's like taking a book about Formula One racing and applying it to motocross. You're gonna make some fucking mistakes. The principles of periodization, specificity, overload variation, if you apply them to hypertrophy, you can create a decent theoretical structure, but it turns out for hypertrophy training, because it's a univariate model, is much, much simpler. You have mesocycles that are constructed to, to stack one on top of the other. You have some considerations to make, some fatigue to reduce. You take an active rest phase, you feel better, and then you repeat the process with a new selection of specialized groups. That basically is the TLDR of hypertrophy periodization. And guess what? I think we basically invented hypertrophy periodization at RP, or at least described it, because there was no such thing when these studies were being tested. So there is no one such thing called periodization. Periodization is just making good, intelligent programs. So everything has a periodized structure, but that doesn't mean it's inordinately complex. And to be honest, even for weightlifting and powerlifting, specifically for weightlifting and Olympic sports, when many of the old Soviet periodization models were uh, developed, there is a little bit of austerity there. There is too much ultra structure too far ahead. An annual plan with all of the weights and percentages filled out in January for you to peak in December is fucking nonsense with almost no exception. But you can make a decent annual plan if you roughly know your competitions. You can at least say, I'm going to be peaking here. I'm probably going to be resting here. I'm probably going to be training my hardest here. No, no, no. I said probably. I didn't say for sure. That is a good treatment of periodization. So me coming from a formal sports science background, Meno coming from a background of being a boy genius and just learning the shit on his own, came to roughly the same conclusion on how hypertrophy should work because it turns out we actually looked at the data and experience and arranged 
our ideas of the world. We modeled the world in a similar way because we were looking at the same fucking world. But if you go and exercise science studies, which are not sports science studies, taking something to mean periodization and something else to mean not periodization, testing it, you're going to get some fucking wacky results. And funny enough, if you look at daily undulating periodization versus linear periodization studies, first of all, neither one of those is periodization. Second of all, why wouldn't you use both? Man, are you familiar with a progression scheme that doesn't try to increase the exposure to stimulus over time? Well, that would be a bad one. It would be a bad one. And it turns out, isn't there some linearity to that process? I mean, doesn't it kind of go like this over time? Every program is linear in a sense. Just slope of the lines, just different. And also, is anyone there really claiming that you do the same thing every single fucking day of every single fucking week? No. Almost all of the old Soviet programs had undulations in volume and load, which means they already fucking used DUP. It was a fucking red herring to begin with. So what you have with periodization is you have ups and downs that over time are linearly aggregated to make you good results. And the huge power there is making a structure that makes sense and then at every time scale auto-regulating it to make sure you're actually doing the thing that you're supposed to do. Yes, you planned to race the track like you did, but there was a race car on your way in that one turn, so you had to turn around. There's no other way to do it. So periodization is absolutely overrated for hypertrophy training. If you your idea of periodization is, you know, what they did to peak for Seoul Korea games in 1988 for shot putters. Absolutely, I would not use that shit. As a matter of fact, that brings me to thought. I don't want to talk too much shit. This is going to come out all wrong. With all due fucking respect. Lane Norton, I don't know if he's a proponent of this, but he sort of experimented with it, where that was like um, strength days, uh, hypertrophy days, and power days in a single week. And it was the, the overall goal was actually, I think, just strength and size. And my question was always like, why the fuck are we doing power training at all? I'm a bodybuilder. I do zero power training. There's no, there's no theoretical reason. There are theoretical negatives, like the stimulus to fatigue ratio is negative because the stimulus is in the wrong direction and the fatigue is still positive. Like, hey, you got more powerful. Cool. How's that help me? It doesn't. By the way, your joints hurt now because you jumped up and down a bunch. Like, why am I doing this? So a lot of times what we inherited from old school periodization is an ultra structure that was designed for a very specific purpose. East German shot putters. They needed that shit. That scheme actually makes sense. If you're an East German shot putter, it makes perfect sense to do a phase in which you're mostly focusing on building muscle size. It makes perfect sense to do a phase in which you're mostly taking that muscle and teaching it to be stronger with some hypertrophy in the mix, with some power in the mix at all those phases. And then a month before your competition, it makes perfect sense to optimize for power production and then more of your training is for power. But we can't take that model and put it to bodybuilders and then when it fails, say, well, you see, periodization doesn't work for bodybuilders. Yes. Strength power periodization does not work for hypertrophy. We need a new periodization there, and it's much simpler. And if you want to know what that looks like, you just have to download my book, uh, The Scientific Principle of Hypertrophy Training, and it's free. But if you pay us $35, you get it for sure. And if you don't pay us anything, then you get from that one website where it's actually just a Chinese virus that infects your computer. Yeah, I would say for the people that aren't super familiar with these terms, making everything very concrete, daily undulating periodization just means you have a higher and a lower app day. That's it. That's all you need. So if you're doing, say, bench pressing or chest work two days per week, do one day that has a different rep target than the other and do that after you've plateaued on simple linear progression. Pretty much always you can't go wrong with starting with linear progression in large part because, and this is something that scientists never discuss, as soon as you have two different rep days, you're cutting your effective rate of progress in half unless you're somehow catching up in the rate of progress, right? It's hard to beat linear progression. If you can add weight to the bar and still hit your rep target, and you just keep doing that consistently over time, it's incredibly difficult to beat that. Then you add some autoregulatory components, which means that you're going to adapt your training to some measures that you look at. Now, this can be like Mike favors more looking at DOMS and pump and the like, and I favor very much just looking at performance or almost exclusively looking at performance, your work capacity, whether you are progressing, which in the end is, in my view in particular, the most important thing in the end, Ag always. Agreed. Yeah, so if you're not progressing, something has to change in your program. And if you are progressing, it's hard to optimize things further often, especially in a well-trained individual. So you have some auto-regulation in there. When you get stuck, implement a difference in rep targets, alternate between them. That's all DOP means. And that's really all the periodization most people need, just intelligently 
implementing these basic principles, progressive overload, auto-regulation, and then yeah, mixing in some different rep targets, changing the stimulus from one workout to the next, so that you're not every time hitting the muscle with the exact same stimulus. And that, that's pretty much the periodization I think you really need for muscle hypertrophy. Totally. And there can be more complex discussions, more nuanced discussions, such as, do I train a little bit differently at the end of a fat loss phase coming up to a show than I did at the beginning of a muscle gain phase or towards the end of a Yes, that. potentially. Absolutely. Maybe you train a little less heavy. Maybe you train with higher reps. Not because higher reps etch in the details, brah, or burn more fat, but because they're just a little bit safer and you're actually fiber type conversions optimized to do higher reps anyway, and you have a bigger gas tank, so on and so forth. So Periodization can begin to look a little bit more complicated, applied to the real world and bodybuilders, but it all starts from the simple elements of specificity, overload, variation, fatigue management, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Periodization unfolds from that. So in the end, I'm right, you're wrong. I've never been wrong. You're always wrong. <laughs> I concede. For, oh, wow. Huh. Mike's much bigger than I am. I feel like it's not the victory I wanted. You know, you you finally, what is it? Um, oh, great line. Uh, Die Hard, you know the movie Die Hard? Of course. When Hans Gruber uh, witnessed the uh, the safe in the Nakatomi Plaza, he I think he quoted some, some Greek shit from, you know, Alexander the Great, the Conqueror. It was that, uh, and then he wept for he knew he had no more worlds to conquer. So now that Mena has conceded his inferiority to me on my very own YouTube channel, I feel like... I have nothing and I'm no one. But then again, I felt like that this morning when I woke up. Every day, Menno, that's my life. Ooh, Sounds good. Feel? Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. But and then you, you look outside at your Lambeau fleet and you feel good again? It may, there's a certain warmth that 268 Lamborghinis give you, especially when the butlers get into every one of them and they all have timers. And I go, one, two, three, and they all start them at the same time. <laughs> It just fills your soul, you know? Yeah, woke me up every morning. Every fucking morning. They do it at 6 a.m. It's like a routine. And we do it as an emergency practice. If there's ever a tornado, they have to be able to ride the Lambos out really quick to safety. Anyway, periodization, that was cool. Menno, dope discussion. As always, folks, before you do anything, think about it a little bit. If you like thinking a lot, what you'll really like, free promotion, and Menno did not tell me to, to do this, is Menno Henselman's here has a personal training course. And I consider it the best personal training course on the internet. And it is a fucking serious ass course. It lasts for how long? 10 months. Fuck that. I ain't been to 10 months in school ever, bro. I usually drop out at about month three. Um, super intensive. There's videos. There's reading materials. There are opportunities to interact with human beings. Yes. Yeah. I host it personally. You can ask me all your questions. Oh, I would check it out. If you're a personal trainer, and you've consumed a lot of our content on RP, and you like what you see, and you want to learn to that next level of super in-depth, more and more, really nerd shit, Menno's course is the way to go. Give it some thought, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, and hopefully we'll have more videos with Menno, unless he hates me, and then we're no longer friends, and we'll never talk again. Bye. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.